walking out into the light. Everything's gonna be alright. Everything's gonna be alright. All right. South Carlton, can you? Hear me! All right, welcome to episode two of the Good News News. This week's broadcast will feature two special guests and an abundance of good news. Happiness looks good on you, South Carlton. Okay, uh, assistant, please hold up the sign. Uh, you'll notice here that we have a Doors of Mystery sign, okay? Under each door is the name of our special guest. Let's see what we have behind door number one. Mr. Parnell! Mr. Parnell is going to join us and talk about his career corner spotlight. All right, let's see if we can get him on here. Mr. Parnell, um, are you there? I am. Thanks for having me on the show, Mr. P. All right. Okay. Now, I've heard that you have had some uh, extensive experience working a variety of different jobs throughout your life. So I was hoping whether you could share some of those experiences with our students here today. This is true. I've had a lot of different jobs in my career. Let me think way back to the beginning. I guess it all started when I started working at a calendar factory, but unfortunately I was let go for taking too many days off. <laughs> After that, I tried becoming a computer programmer, but I found I just couldn't hack it. I lost a lot of interest while working in the banking industry. Uh, being a waiter, I found, really helped to get food on the table. <laughs> After that, I studied to become a doctor, but realized I had absolutely no patience. <laughs> Tried fishing for a little while, but really didn't like relying on net income. <laughs> Repairing bathtubs was way too draining. Eventually, I just worked as a baker because I really needed the dough. <laughs> wow, uh, what a list, Mr. Parnell. Uh, how about any embarrassing moments along the way? Oh, lots, lots. Uh, I guess especially uh, the one time I got fired from the unemployment office, but still had to show up the next day. <laughs> um, okay, uh, can you speak to your work ethic a little bit for our audience? Absolutely. So I'm a super hard worker. I don't mind working extra hours, extra long hours. I mean, as long as they're lunch hours. <laughs> now, uh, looking to the future. Hmm, let's see. I guess I could really see myself working in the mirror industry. <laughs> um, anything on the go right now? Uh, yeah, actually, I've, uh, I've started up my own business. I've started building yachts in my attic. Oh, and um, how's that going? Well, currently, sales are through the roof. All right. Well, thank you, Mr. Parnell. What a crazy ride that has been. You might say you're at least Parnellially overworked. <laughs> All right. Speaking of uh, nice working moment. hard, I think it's time that I opened door number two. Assistant, hold up the sign, please. Okay, so in door number two, we have, dun, 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 Amateur Raheem. All right, let's get uh, Amateur Raheem on here. Are you there? Let's see. South Carlton. All right, so right now we have this week's announcements. First up, the library is running a wellness bingo for the month of May. It's posted in the library Google Classroom. Once a student has completed all three of the activities, they can register that for a draw that will be held at the end of the month. Next, athletic letters are a go. As the end of the school year approaches, we prepare and we're preparing to celebrate our graduating students. The athletics department is also looking to celebrate graduating student athletes. We have a number of student athletes leaving South Carlton this year, and although their ability to participate in student 
in school athletics was cut short, they have a lasting impact on our school and we want to recognize their contributions. Graduating student athletes who would like to be considered for an athletic letter award can complete the application form found on the school website and within Mr. Arden's parent email. The Student Council Trivia Challenge is ongoing and runs until May 31st. Check out the Instagram for more details. Relay for Life is happening May 28th, and there will be a variety of ways to participate. Remember that if you sign up and fundraise, you can earn volunteer hours. For every $20 raised, one volunteer hour for up to five hours is earned, and everybody wins. Also this year, the Rainbow Youth Forum is coming up. The OCDSB invites all students of all ages to participate in the annual Rainbow Youth Forum on May, 20, on May 20th from 7 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. It's a virtual event that celebrates our diversity and is a day for students and staff to learn together. You can register through the Rainbow Youth Forum website as well as through the link posted on the school website. And that is all for this week, folks. Back to Mr. Pettigrew. All right. Thank you so much, Amateur Raheem. It sounds like there are plenty of happy things happening in our school. Okay. Um, next up, we're going to introduce a, a segment, a new segment that I like to call um, What Rhymes with Institutional Memory? All right. In this segment, we are going to um, we are going to have a poem every week that, and let me get my uh, screen shared here in this Google Forum uh, filming in my basement section. Okay, uh, in this segment, we're going to recite poetry that captures feelings from our previous high school experience, where memories of what used to be, what it used to be like, are recounted in rhyme. Uh, allow me to share this week's poem. All right, this is by a renowned poet um, named Brian Thomas Anthony Pettigrew. He has uh, four names, so very special. Um, all right, here, this one is called uh, The Calf, South Carlton's Tesseract, a cube of energy. All right, so let me, it's a limerick. Filled with smells and words that offend, grades were separated end to end, teacher supervision and many poor decisions, but boy, would I love to go there again. Oh, did you feel that? My soul shivered. Okay, um, if you would like to participate in future um, uh, institutional memory poetry sections, um, please just write your poem and send me an email. Maybe you can even, even be a guest on next week's show. Okay, uh, don't be shy, South Carlton. Write a haiku and see how it goes. All right, we'll end this episode with this week's photo challenge. Photo challenge, photo challenge. Thank you to everyone who submitted pictures of hats on pets. Our furry and slimy extended community is clearly well-dressed. This week, I'm thinking of a new challenge, one that will stir your creative juices. I'm thinking, Teddy's in trouble. Put your stuffy in a tough spot and take a picture. Maybe they've, en they've encountered some bullies. Maybe they've been caught cheating on their forensics test. <laughs> Who knows? Have fun with it. Take a picture and submit to the Google form. Until then, South Carlton, make good news. Everything's gonna be alright.